Hello, my name is Sasha Kourov. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute for Advanced Study, Princeton, New Jersey, the United States. I will talk about crossing boundaries, outreach, and virtual worlds. I will tell about two experiments that we performed last year of using virtual worlds for outreach. Then I will briefly talk about what we learned from these experiences. I will invite everyone to collaborate because I think that there is a lot of that we can explore in virtual worlds and I would be happy to meet like-minded people uh, to do it together. And finally, I want to advertise a workshop that uh, was organized with support from the American Astronomical Society. You can follow this link and sign up for a newsletter. So last year, we saw a global move towards online interactive experiences. You notice it yourself, but I will just mention a couple of things. So, for example, Fortnite, super popular multiplayer online video game, launched a concert series inside the game. So the audience members, players, were able to communicate with themselves while enjoying the concert. Uh, theaters moved uh, into this virtual space, especially immersive theaters, because they needed to stay immersive. So actors were forced to explore new media and finally, I want to mention that education also tried to move into virtual worlds. This is just a random ad from the internet uh, where um, you see it's an offering of a Minecraft lecture, Minecraft lesson about the science of the International Space Station. So virtual worlds for outreach. What, first of all, what do I mean by virtual worlds? Uh, by virtual worlds, I mean uh, shared experiences. That the audience members, the lecturer, are within one world. They can interact not only through the audio, but through their movements. And also they are able to interact with the space itself. So there are existing virtual worlds that you can already use. And examples are video games like Minecraft and Fortnite that I mentioned. There are social networks, Second Life and VR Chat. These are three-dimensional social networks where you can, in, in a similar manner, interact with other people. And there are specifically meeting platforms like Zoom or Allspace VR. And I'm sure you experienced many, many of them in the last uh, year. So what are the qualities of this platform that we are looking for? What do we need for outreach? At least for us, we defined it in the following way. We wanted something completely accessible almost to everyone. Uh, by that, I mean technological accessibility, that we wanted to run on any device, like phone, tablet, laptop, maybe VR headset if you have one. We wanted to work even on old hardware, like five, ten years old. And uh, we also wanted, ideally, to work in the browser because we, want, we don't want to force people install like any software on their devices. Then we want something completely decoupled from social media. We obviously don't want to force people to register somewhere and uh, share private information about themselves. Uh, then we want something customizable. I mean, two things by that. We want it to be customizable visually because we want to bring our own vision into the world and customizable in terms of interactions. And, and I mean, not only quizzes. I mean, something more complicated, like you can imagine escape room where you need to complete certain steps in order to open a new part of the world. Also, we want something future-proof. By that, I mean uh, that we want whatever we create, we want to reuse it as many times as possible, and we want it to survive for a couple of years at least. So the first uh, pilot show that we created was about Hayabusa 2 mission. It was created in collaboration with Elizabeth Tusker, Earth Life Science Institute, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Uh, it looked like this. Um, we have audience members and the lecturers sharing the same world. Some of the people are wearing headsets. For example, we see someone in the headset who can draw in three dimensions. Uh, some of the audience members were from the phones, others were using uh, laptops. And uh, we used the platform called Mozilla Hubs for this experience. Uh, 
So there are three spaces in this experience. The first one that we saw at the beginning was a real recreation, a recreation of a real room from Earth Life Science Institute. This second world that you see is a fairy tale world. Um, we have it because the asteroid that the spacecraft visited was named after Ryugu. It's a fairy tale palace, so that's why we had a fairy tale world to talk about it. And finally, we had the surface of the asteroid recreated from real data collected by the spacecraft. The audience members were able to look at different media files, interact with three-dimensional objects, and the show actually ended with people vandalizing the surface of the asteroid with graffiti. So it was lots of fun for the kids. And uh, people were staying like 20, 30 minutes after the show, uh, playing hide and seek, hiding behind the rocks. So people were able to find their own ways to interact with the environment, even without solicitation from the lecturer. The second experience that I want to show, to share with you, is Mars.gallery. If, if you follow this link right now, you will be able to see it yourself. But here is a video. It was created in collaboration with Nautilus magazine and Elizabeth Tasker uh, did the narration. So if you click on these green circles, you will hear the narration uh, talking about the specific object. You can think about it as a museum installation. So you can walk around and listen sort of blurbs about different things. Also, you can see other members of the audience if they connect to the same space. If you launch uh, the Ingenuity helicopter, then it will be launched for everyone in that room. And uh, you can observe it, for example, with your friends. Um, also, it's possible to have a lecture in this world. You can, for example, have a scheduled lecture at a given time where the lecturer connects and gives a guided tour through this small exhibition. So what did we learn? Uh, doing these experiences. So we learned how to do it. We, we learned what technology can be used and how. Uh, however, we found out that interaction with the audience has to be resought. It's a very rich environment. Um, you can interact with the audience in many ways. And your skills that you build interacting with live audience is transferable there, but not completely. There are more things to learn. So additional experience needed to be comfortable in those worlds. And I talk not about technology. I talk about interaction with, with other people. However, it's certainly fun for the students, and it's indeed interactive, as I mentioned. As a lecturer, you also get a richer feedback from the audience. Maybe you don't see their faces, but you certainly see how they move. You certainly see where other people look at. Um, so that's um, interesting. And what we are doing right now. So I personally think that there are many techniques that can be borrowed from the immersive theaters. We can learn a lot from them because they're far ahead in this game. Um, I think that their uh, industry is much larger. And right now, they're experimenting with all sorts of media. I mean, online interactive media. We also experiment with uh, lecture formats. It's unclear how long lectures should be. It's unclear how much interactions you should have throughout the lectures. So we didn't find this sweet spot yet, but it's something that we hope to find by doing more of these shows. We also explore different worlds. So I have shown you three-dimensional worlds where you are represented as an avatar. But it can be a two-dimensional world or something abstract. And maybe for certain cases, those would be a better choice. Um, and we are developing new shows. We are looking for ideas what we can do uh, new and meaningful in this media. Finally, I want to say that I'm happy to collaborate if you have the audience that can benefit from the virtual worlds or you have some learning materials that can be adapted to the virtual worlds. Please contact me via the link you see on the screen. Also, please follow this link to register for the newsletter for the workshop that we organize later this year on this topic. Thank you for your attention.